And for myself, I've always been a creator, you know, an idea person, a creator that goes back to my artistry. Well, welcome everyone to another episode of Creative Haven. I am here with Yvette Vargas from Writer's Room 5050. And I was introduced to her by Tamika Lamison. And I've actually met Yvette, uh, I believe, through a Creator Up event or workshop by another person I interviewed in this podcast, Michael Tringe. Uh, but Yvette, I would love for you to actually tell the audience more about your story and your background and how you got to where you are today. Sure, thank you. Uh, and Mitchell, really, thank you so much for, for, for having me. I'm, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm honored and, and, and also extremely excited. Um, Good. You know, thank you, thank you. Uh, you know, so, so in terms of where I started, uh, well, you know, I was, uh, I'm originally from New York. I was born in the Bronx, the Boogie Down. <laughs> yes. The Boogie Down Bronx. Where hip hop um, started. Yes, where hip hop started. Yes, <laughs> and uh, and uh, so I'm of uh, Puerto Rican descent. My um, grandparents immigrated from Puerto Rico when my parents were two and four years old. So my you know, my parents are extremely Americanized, um, but at the same time, very 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 Puerto Rican as well. <laughs> <laughs> would that say? Would that be a Boricua? A Boricua. Yes. There you yes. go. Fabulous! Look at look, you are in the know. Look at you. <laughs> I am a big I am a big pun fan. So, well, the, the rapper big pun. So, uh huh. Yes. <laughs> but yes. go ahead. <laughs> fabulous, fabulous. Um, yes. Yeah, so, so that you know, that was my uh, you know, those were my early years. I learned. I I actually spoke Spanish before I, before I spoke English. You know, Spanish, and 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 really because of my grandparents. You know, because of my grandparents who you know who took care of my myself and my brothers. I, I actually grew up with three brothers. The lover, the fighter, the jock, <laughs> and uh, I, I am the artist uh, in between. You know, still, still, till this day. And you know, it it was definitely, you know, it was definitely uh, a very happy, you know, up, up upbringing. And you know, my my parents um, were just serial entrepreneurs. You know, so mm. so they had that kind of hustle. And, uh, you know, they just really instilled in my brothers and I, uh, you know, just a work, a very strong work ethic. And, you know, that was, that was also a big focus um, of growing up. But, uh, but I was always an artist. I, I grew up drawing, painting and writing. Mm. And, uh, and all of that, that, that foundation of literally taking an idea beginning with an idea and taking that all the way through to produce a product whether it was a drawing, right? Whether, whether it was a painting, whether it was, you know, sculpture, mm -hmm. um, that I, I just really understood that the creative process really began with an idea. And then at the end, you had a tangible result, some kind of tangible product entity. Uh, and that was just really instilled at me at a very, very early age, um, which I just, you know, built on uh, upon it in, in my career, as well as other details, but, but in terms of, of a foundation, I just understood that process innately. And, um, but, you know, a couple of things really happened to change my trajectory, I guess, in, in terms of what my life would have been like, um, if we, if my family had stayed in the Bronx, um, if we had never left the Bronx. Mm -hmm. So, so a couple of, a couple of things happened. Um, my, uh, my grandparents, my, my father's parents they owned a uh a bodega um in the bronx and did we you know we, we just spent a lot of a lot of fun you know a lot of fun times uh you know there um but you know the neighborhoods the neighborhoods were starting to get a bit rough you know a, a bit rough um and my you know my my parents were you know really thinking that's like it's, it's it's really time it's really time to move um but uh but but actually, um, I witnessed my first uh, dead body at the age of five, actually, Whoa. Um, outside of my grandparents' bodega. Um, and it was someone in, in the neighborhood um, who was uh, gunned down. And, and it's interestingly enough, Mitchell, I never actually knew the backstory of mm -hmm. what occurred 
uh, until my father filled me in more, more recently that actually this particular person who was shot was a bully. So he actually had it coming, Ooh. but all, you know, but, but yeah, but for many years, I just, I never had any idea as to, you know, why, you know, why this happened. And, 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 you know, this guy, he was extremely tall. His nickname was King size mm-hmm. and everyone just knew him in the neighborhood. Um, but anyway, it was this, you know, summer night, you know, here we go. Um, everyone is out. We were on the fire escape at my grandparents and uh king size yes uh, exactly exactly (laughs) and my grant you know and and uh king size you know he he literally was yelling and 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 running through you know through the crowds you know trying to divert uh you know just uh, you know attention he was running weaving in and out of the crowd and you know there was another man you know following him who you know eventually gunned him down outside of my out of my grandparents bodega and uh you know so it was you know obviously shocking and, and, and striking, you know, I, I mean, I, I, even, even at that age, I, I had an understanding of what, you know, had occurred. Um, and uh, so that was definitely like the ultimate, uh, you know, catalyst for my parents, like, okay, you know, we really do have to get out of the Bronx. So, you know, they just started working. Uh, they took on other, you know, additional job. They worked two and three jobs, you know, saved for two, you know, for, for two years. And, um, you know, they ended up buying our first family home in New Jersey. Um, and it was a uh, white suburbia. <laughs> it was white suburbia. So, so my family moved from the Bronx to this, uh, white suburban New Jersey neighborhood where we were the only, uh, Latinx family in the entire County actually. Wow. And yeah, yeah. And it was pretty much, uh, that way until I, you know, grad- ended up graduating, graduating high school. So, you know, it was definitely culture shock. It was definitely culture shock. Uh, you know, I mean, and and it was the best thing that my parents, you know, really really could have done. It just changed the trajectory. That was a significant change uh, in 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 my life trajectory, which also affected my artistry and storytelling in a very significant way. Significant mm-hmm. way until this day, um, because then my uh, I never actually realized until I was a person of color until 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 we left the Bronx. And, uh, and then my personal story, uh, just in terms of identity, then became one of assimilation. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, again, just never, never even knowing what any of that meant or, or was. And, uh, you know, and, and, and some of that was smooth and some of that was rough. I mean, there are a lot of things that, you know, when you're the only things, you know, there, there, there's a lot of, that goes on there. Um, and, uh, and for myself, uh, you know, my entire history has been the only, like, you know, in, in my family, the, you know, the, the, the only female, the only girl, uh, you know, out, out, out of my, uh, from my, you know, from, from my brothers, uh, you know, then, then when we moved into, you know, into the suburbs, like, okay, I was the only Latina, <laughs> I was mm-hmm, the only mm-hmm. Latina. Um, and, uh, and then I was also, an artist, you know, so that, that kind that set me aside as well as different, you know, different and unique in that respect. Um, and, and, uh, you know, and I was also into technology as well, you know, growing, growing up with these three brothers, my, their, their toys and gadgets were much cooler than my, you know, than my, than my toys. And I just loved, loved, loved technology. So, so, uh, and then, so then I, I was this, you know, Latina who also loved technology that made me the only, I mean, there were just so many, so many things that always made me the, you know, the, the only, uh, and then, you know, in, the, in my early, in my early, like, uh, you know, tween years and, and, you know, in teen years, um, you know, you just want to fit in. So it's like, you know, I, I just, I wanted my name to be Jenny, you know, I wanted to be <laughs> <laughs> just like everybody else and not necessarily like, like myself, but uh, you know, really what, what a couple of things happened, um, you know, storytelling, you know, going back to storytelling, my, uh, you know, my father has this, he just has an incredible sense of humor. He could have, he could have been a stand up comedian. He just, he just never really quite had that support or he never even really knew that he could make a living doing that, but he's that funny. Um, and our dinner table was just this very, uh, it was a place filled with, rich imagination Mm -hmm. uh and stories were just told i mean that that's literally how we entertained ourselves was just we're just telling stories whether they were memories of of events that have happened in the past or just fabricated stories so i really learned the magic of that Um, so the dinner table was just always this really fun place of imagination nice 
Thank you. Did and your brothers ever jump into that conversation as well? Oh God, yes. Now they're 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 amazing. My brothers are amazing storytellers. They they don't write, but they absolutely can tell very vivid stories where you're hanging on their every on their every word. Yes, I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, it's 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 a gift. It is a gift in my in my, in my family where everyone can tell a really great, very compelling story. <laughs> and uh, you know, so the, the but but then at the dinner table, like it was the competition was you know, who could, uh, who could get their story in, who could actually tell their story. And it also became about who could tell the loudest story because you, <laughs> because you want it to be heard, you know, over everyone else. Um, so again, it gave me a, just a really strong foundation about the power of story. And then, you know, going, going back to my assimilation experience, um, you know, one of the things that actually did help us assimilate was the fact that we had different stories from everyone else. And then therefore the, you know, the, the neighbors, you know, the people in the town, the people in the community, they became very curious about us because we were different and because our stories were, you know, were different. It was like, we were exposing this whole other world to them mm. that they never really knew existed. So again, even there, I, I recognize the power of story. So, um, you know, so, and then, and then I really, uh, you know, at some point, you know, I, I got over wanting to be Jenny and I, and, and I was like, you know what, <laughs> Yvette's, Yvette's, Yvette's pretty cool. Yvette's pretty unique. I think um, so too. Yeah. <laughs> Yvette you. from the block. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And, uh, and then that's when I just really leaned into what made me unique and, and different and, and, and an artist. And that's, that was where I found, well, began to really find my voice. Um, you know, as well as a human being, as as an artist, as as someone who was creative, and uh, and and that's when I really started. Uh, you know, that's that's when I really started uh, working on. Well, that's when I really found writing. You know, mm -hmm. as well because around that time, this is my early teens. I fell in love with the short story, the short story format, which really, you know, the short story format is very much a blueprint for a cinematic expression. And um, yeah, I just became really passionate ab about, you know, short stories. Edgar Allan Poe was just, you know, one of my, one of just an incredible hero and, 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 and many others. Um, and, uh, you know, so I started really writing uh, narratives uh, based off of my drawings. And then after a while, I started drawing images based on my, you know, on my narratives. And that, and that relationship really grew. Um, and it's a relationship that is just really, uh, it's, it's a very strong element or part of my process today in terms of when I am creating stories. Uh, you know, either I will draw some images or I will find images that represent what I see in my head. So um, you could be a great storyboard artist. <laughs> if, you know, if, if I absolutely pursued that, that career, yes, I, I, I really, you know, I really, I believe, I believe I could have been, I absolutely believe I could have been. Um, but like anything else, you know, you have to, you have to practice that every, every day. So that it becomes, yep. you know, your, your, your special, uh, you know, your craft, your special craft. Um, but I do, uh, but I do love that relationship of, you know, the, the, the word to the image and, and uh, you know, that, that visual image back to, back to the word, that symbiotic relationship. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, so I, 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 I just kept, um, I kept that, kept up that process, uh, you know, between writing and, drawing and, and, and painting. Um, and, uh, and also music was a really huge, you know, influence. I, um, well, once I graduated high school, uh, you know, I, I got into DJing, um, you know, DJing. Nice. I used to, yes, I used to DJ local, you know, local venues. Um, in New on Jersey. turntables? Yeah, on turntables. I'm, I'm a DJ too. <laughs> Look at love you. it. Love it. On love the it. vinyl yes. and techniques. Yes. <laughs> absolutely absolutely house That's music so cool. and yeah ha, you know, house music and you know some like the house cat back then what is that yeah wow that's yeah. so cool yeah L yeah love it love lo loved it um you know so i you know i would do that um and uh and also you know i got into graffiti because of my you know my drawing so i just lo loved all of that and uh so once I graduated high school, um, you know, I went to, I went to, I went to art school. I went to FIT. I started out at FIT where I studied design, um, graphic design and fashion design. And um, after, a, you know, two years of that, I ended up getting my associate's degree because I just wanted to work. 
So uh, then I started, well, I, but one thing that also part of the story, um, I spent a semester uh, abroad, I studied in Paris, and that was another really great, you know, strong influence in terms of between the, the visual, just visual storytelling, um, and, and, you know, and again, the, the, the written word, that was a really huge influence as well. And, uh, and then once I graduated high school, um, I started, I, I, I started working as a fashion designer. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I worked for Donna Karen and Calvin Klein and, you know, a whole host of others, cause I have the New York hustle. So, you know, I, I just worked 20, you know, 25, seven and, um, and I, uh, and I, and I was also freelancing, doing, uh, working, doing graphic design work with ad agencies and, uh, you know, a whole host of other things. But, um, but anyway, you know, I, I loved that work, but I, I hated the people. <laughs> <laughs> Is that fashion in the, that, in the ad world? That, well, the fashion, the fashion. Yeah. The, okay. the, the ad world is tough too, but the, you know, the fashion it's, it's, it's challenging. It's a challenging industry. Yep. And, uh, and, and, you know, and really my storytelling, my desire to tell stories was also, you know, that, that was really growing and, and, you know, I was shooting music videos and, and, you know, just, just really pushing, really focusing on, on, on those skills and developing those skills. So I, uh, I ended up actually then going to NYU, you know, so, so I, nice. I love the fashion industry. Thank you. I, um, I went to NYU on, on a scholarship, which was amazing. And, uh, and then I just really thrived there because I was able to bring everything my, you know, between my visual storytelling skills, also my tech skills, because I really, you know, again, like all of the, the gadgets, the toys, I, you know, I just absolutely adore all of that. And I was able to bring those skills into the filmmaking craft again, where I, you know, I really, I could understand the camera and I can understand the technology of it as well as the delivery system. Oh. Mm-hmm as well as the delivery system, um, because uh, this, is, this is also something that was important was, uh, this is when, you know, digital, you know, some of the earlier days of digital, when, when digital media really uh, started to become a thing mm-hmm. uh, in terms of being able to deliver, uh, you know, like, you know, the, obviously the internet, you know, you know, was there, but in terms of really delivering media um, and, and interactive experiences, um, you know, all of that, which I just had the skills for. So mm-hmm. when I, and, and yes, so, and, and, and I was also, you know, even when I was at NYU, I was, uh, working at ad agencies, um, you know, to make money and, uh, uh, you know, art directing, um, and designing interactive website experiences. I mean, I just really got into that very early. Again, I had, I had all the right skills for that. So, um, so, you know, I just kept developing all of those skills, but, uh, but anyway, uh, I, at NYU, I just really flourished there and my, uh, my senior thesis film ended up winning the best of NYU. It got nice. me a lot of buzz. Thank you. Uh, and you wrote it too? Of, yeah. I wrote, directed and produced it. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So it, yeah, it, it ended up winning the best of NYU. It got me a lot of buzz and that's what got me out to LA. Um, you know, cause once I started traveling with that film and, and NYU also has for the winners of their, you know, of their festival, um, they bring everybody out to New York. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. They, from New York to LA, they bring everybody, they bring everyone out to LA. And that's when I really realized for the first time that the business was really in LA. And, and of course, intellectually, I knew that, but when you're from New York, you think everything is in New York because yeah. you know what? for the most part, everything really is in New York and they do have an entertainment, uh, you know, the entertainment companies are there, you know, as well. And I, and, and I had been working for some of them, you know, freelancing and doing projects and, uh, and, and a whole host of other things. But, but what I really understood at that time was the, the business of the business was here in LA. Mm. And uh, so I just really knew at that time that if I was going to work in, in, in the entertainment business, that I really needed to make the move. So, uh, yeah, so uh, I would say maybe six months or so after that um, was when uh, I made the move and um, made the move with my boyfriend at the time, who's now my husband. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and it really was the best move that we, we could have done. Um, you know, we moved here uh, before 9-11. So it was, uh, yeah, and that was, you know, it was bitter, you know, bittersweet. I mean, we were so happy not to be in New York yeah. at the, you know, and during that particular period. But at the same time, it was, you know, it was difficult not to be there. Right. Um, while, you know, New York and just the people that we loved um, were, were under, you know, just experiencing that on a day to day because they were there. Um, so, you know, we were grateful, you know, not obviously not to be in the line of fire, but, you know, at the same time, um, I don't know. I mean, my, I live in LA, but my heart is in New York, you know, and my, and my family's there and I, and I, and I still have so many, you know, wonderful friends. Um, so it was just an interesting time. So, yeah, so we, so, so we, we, I mean, we literally moved here, not, it, it was, uh, not too long, um, uh, you know, before 9-11. So, um, yeah. And, you know, and of course that changed, that changed the world, but, uh, But once, uh, but once I actually got to LA because I had all of these digital storytelling skills, as well as the traditional uh, storytelling skills, I started working at the digital departments at the studios. Nice. Okay. Universal, Disney, Sony. And, um, and then I was also freelancing, you know, all, all over town. And one of the great things about working at the digital departments is that you create you know, we, we were creating digital content for everything that's happening at the studio. Mm-hmm. So I, I literally was creating digital digital content, digital expressions of feature films that were about to premiere and television series and video games, comic books, music, you know, uh, you know, the, the studios own like huge catalogs of music. So, um, and labels. Um, yeah, so, so it was, I, I really was able to really learn how to adapt IP, um, you know, between the, the the concepts and just how to adapt IPs into experiences. It was a whole host of, of, of different digital uh, media, you know, that I created. Whether you know whether it was web web series or interactive games, um, you know, again, comic books, music players. You know, it was a whole host of different kinds of digital media to support, uh, you know, the, the IP. So that was that I learned a tremendous amount, you know, from that, uh, from, you know, just about story and, and of course adaptation and just really being able to utilize what the, the, the actual strength that, uh, well, and even the, like the power of each medium, right? Mm-hmm. Every single medium has its own set of rules and its own strength. Um, and uh, so I really learned uh, just the the foundations of, if you wanna tell a story on different mediums, you know, I, I really, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you know, that really became a skill set. And, uh, and then I became revered uh, around town as this multi-platform storyteller because I had this particular skill set and uh, plus I had the artistry, uh, you know, on, on, on top of that. And uh, so I was freelancing, all, you know, all over town. Um, and after a couple of years of that, um, my, uh, again, my, my boyfriend at the time, who's now my husband, we started our own digital media production company called uh, Digital Rain. And we had that, that company un- until this day. And, and, you know, and, and we, you know, we, we, we definitely, you know, we still have, uh, you know, some, some select, uh, you know, clients. It's just not what we do on the full time anymore. But at the mm-hmm. time, you know, we 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 started this digital media production company, and uh, and really we had great success. You know, great success with the company. And I mean, you know, our clients were studios and production companies, and 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 music artists. Uh, you know, M- Madonna was a client for three years, and 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 Wu Tang. Um, amongst, amongst, you know, many other artists and, uh, and also, um, you know, video game companies. And so we, we were just creating all of this digital uh, content with unique experiences. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, loved, loved that work. Um, but what happened was after a couple of years of that, now, and now we're getting to around, you know, 2008, mm-hmm. a little around, around that time period, um, what happened was that 
you know, again, I loved the work, uh, but between building the company and doing the client work now at this point, I just didn't have time to tell my own stories anymore. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I knew that I needed to, to make a change. So I, uh, and then television, television had reached a whole other level of what was possible, um, you know, to tell stories and, uh, you know, cause this was around the time, like six feet, uh, yeah, like six feet under was, was winding down Sopranos, you know, had just gone off the air. Um, again, we had just reached a whole other level of what was possible. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, the, the stories that were possible to tell in this, in, in the television medium. And I had always loved television. Um, but you know, but I, I, I just, didn't feel like I knew enough about television to, you know, really pursue working in it. And um, so I actually decided to go back to school. I, uh, and, and I went to UCLA, at, you know, for grad school, and specifically because through their screenwriting major, they had a two year concentration called the showrunner track. Oh, nice. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, and, you know, so I got into that and the first year was half hour. The, the focus was half hour, um, ha you know, half hour narratives and, uh, you know, comedies, you know, I mean, now half hours, you know, you have half hour dramas, you know, at the time that's, that's more of a recent trend, right. Um, uh, in terms of what we would actually define as a half hour drama. Oh, yeah. But, um, you know, but at the time, you know, it was really more half hour comedies, but, but I still, I, I learned that format um and uh and just you know how the room works and, and you know uh, uh you know pitching writing that writing the pilot writing the second episode running the room um you know and a whole host of of, of other things um so yeah so the, the first year was half hour the second year was you know what was was one hour and you know and for myself i've always been a creator you know an idea person a creator that goes back to my artistry um and uh so i had you know i had a, a library. I literally had an arsenal of projects that for the first time in a long time, I was able to really focus on. So I you know, just built up my library of, of television series uh, ideas that I had. And, uh, and then what happened um, before I graduated, which was in 2012, because, uh, you know, after, after I completed the show running, uh, the, you know, the TV track, requirements that I had to complete the screenwriting requirements. So I, I was, so I was at UCLA for um, three and a half years. And uh, anyway, so, so before I graduated um, my undergrad NYU Tisch, they have a thriving alumni here in LA. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so they, they had a, a call for submissions from their alumni for their digital series lab, which was similar to what Sundance does with, you know, with, with their labs. And uh, this was, this was a, a four to five month commitment where, you know, you literally were to produce three episodes of a web series. So um, nice. anyway, 2012 thanks. too, that's like, this is like right after YouTube's getting a little bigger because yep. you were creating digital content before YouTube. Yep, before and it, YouTube. And yep. so it's, it's in my mind, I'm like, where were you distributing that? You know, on, oh. where was it online and what were the DV, you know, was it just DVDs? Like, it's interesting to hear your path because it, just going through all the different um, types of storytelling that you learned and actually expressed from film school to digital media in the studios and then going into your own you know uh, company and then now you know getting into writing and show running and then creating your own digital series for tish like it's such a great evolution mm -hmm. um and so it must have been interesting to see how youtube and more digital platforms came into play right around the time where you had to start uh creating these three a video episode, this three episode series for Tish. Yep, exactly. Yeah, no, and and there were you know there were a couple of players uh, you know at at the time, and and but one one of the popular ways you know just in terms of um, experiencing you know seeing and experiencing experiencing digital content. I mean, a lot of it was you know on websites, you know, mm -hmm. literally branded, you know, branded branded websites, or you know where you would find it. But then, but then you know there there were platforms also that started to uh, 
you know, to pop up. And in fact, and now I'm like totally spacing on their name at the moment. I can see the logo in my head, but I can't remember at the moment. Moment, um, a blip, blip TV. Yeah, blip, blip TV. Blip. Yes. Oh, oh my gosh. I remember those days now where it was like college humor, cracked, machinima. Exactly. There were, there were all these O and O's, just these websites, like you said, that their own yep. video players. Yep. And it was, I mean, I remember when there was also short film um marketplaces or just yeah. databases and yeah blip tv that's actually i think how i i think mike tringe was working there for a little bit too but it's 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 really cool to go down memory lane when it comes to video content and digital content because you have like a very similar um uh, trajectory as like uh, for me because i i i remember seeing it from 2000 and five and on but you've seen it you saw it even beforehand when mm -hmm. Yeah. You, the technology was even just beginning in the 90s yeah so exactly. it's so cool to hear this uh this story excellent thank you thank you so much and you're and you're exactly correct um so yes and so in fact going back to blip tv blip tv was a distributor for this uh this tish alumni uh, um a, a digital lab they mm -hmm. were the distributor so they had i mean you know they had like an exclusive window for i don't know maybe six months or maybe even a year uh, yeah. So, so, so they were a partner, they were a partner of, of this, of this Tish lab. Um, so anyway, you know, I, uh, I, I ended up actually winning, winning that, that lab, that, that competition. Amazing. Um, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And it was a, you know, sci-fi action thriller starring Henry, Ro starring Henry Rollins. And uh, so, yeah, it, it, you know, that was like an amazing night. I, I could totally just, you know, remember, remember that night, um, you know, Tish had this beautiful, huge event. It was, uh, you know, at, at a beautiful venue, uh, right on Melrose, packed house. And um, yeah, it was just, it was just an amazing event. The, bl the blip people were there. Yeah, it was, it was just incredible. So I ended up winning. I ended up winning that competition. The judges were NBC Universal television executives. Uh, who really loved the show. So then that led to me getting a production grant from NBC Universal. So I kept making episodes. Um, and uh, then the series ended up premiering at Sundance in 2014. And, uh, and there were direct TV executives there who really, you know, who really loved the show. So then the show ended up premiering on direct TV. Um, and this was, this was all, you know, 2014. And it did really well there and because it was like this digital interactive um because i because i also like created uh i created an app i created a comic book i mean you know i created an ecosystem for it mm -hmm. so it was this whole digital play that ended up premiering in traditional television uh and did well there the series ended up uh you know it, it ended up being nominated for two emmys in the interactive category nice I, thank you thank you i lost the game of thrones <laughs> but I, but I can live with that. And uh, yeah, you know, so, and then that just ended up opening a variety of different, a variety of different doors for me. Um, and I mean, I, so I've just been, I've been working in the scripted space, uh, you know, pretty much since, because, um, because uh, that's, you know, today, and, and very much as a creator, I'm a developer mm -hmm. creator. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've sold seven pitches, uh, you know, to studios and, and, and networks um, and production companies. And, uh, you know, I, and, and I'm hoping the most recent one actually was uh, a couple months back. I sold the series to E1 Entertainment One. Um, yeah, and, I know E1. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, so we are just about done packaging that that series, building that series. Oh, congrats. Team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we have our creative kickoff. Um, we have, a, we have a meeting, we have a meeting uh, soon, which I'm really excited about. And, uh, and then, you know, we're just getting this show ready to take out to the marketplace. An incredible team. I can't say with who, but, uh, mm -hmm. but um, amazing, amazing A plus, A plus uh, folks on the, on this team, um, you know, trying to give this show every single opportunity to be sold. Right. You always want to go in uh, to give the buyer, every reason to say yes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, doing all of that, all of that work now. And uh, yeah, so that was the most recent show that I sold, which was late, it was like late summer, early, early fall, um, you know, when I sold that. 
and uh, then have a couple of other projects set up around town. And, uh, and then I'm also currently in prep to direct uh, a proof of concept short for one hour series I developed during COVID. So uh, getting ready to do that, I was definitely slated to, you know, to direct that, uh, that proof of concept last year. Um, but of course, you know, COVID hit. Uh, so I've just been waiting for it just to be safer here in LA to, you know, to shoot that there, you know, there are, you know, children um, as part of the, the you know, the, the narrative. So just really waiting for the right time here, but we're getting, yeah. we're getting closer, we're getting closer. And uh, yeah, you know, so, so I work, uh, you know, television is my main, uh, that's my main, that's my main area. That's my main focus. And I'm just constantly creating, developing, um, and uh, occasionally executive producing, uh, and uh, you know, and, and and hoping, uh, you know, really hoping this year to, you know, to close uh, some, you know, some some big deals. Um, love it. Uh, thank you. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, thank that, you so have such an accomplished background. It's I love hearing your story, and it comes back to you being a storyteller. So it's just got me thinking about all of those images in my mind of how you've just grown into a creator today and how all these different tools you have in your in your in your tool case you have so many uh weapons in your arsenal with digital storytelling to tv show running to filmmaking to painting to graphic design it's just everything and you're just such a creative and perfect for this podcast and it's great to see how you've taken your creativity and your love for art and storytelling and, and just created this um, business out of it, but not only that, a career out of it, you know, and it's, it's a very different time now where digital has turned into social media and YouTube and you have OTT and apps. And there's so many different places where digital and people now just call it video can, can actually right. live. And, <laughs> you know, hearing it from you, like uh, the, just hearing digital, I'm like, Oh my God, I remember when we used to call it digital media. And I would have to always tell people about the YouTube because I quit my job to pursue YouTube full time and people thought I was crazy. And then now everyone's asking me how to build a YouTube channel. And it's it's fascinating to hear from you how you're working in the TV world because TV right now, it's it's facing this uh, kind of like a um, uh, uh kind of like a new form of storytelling through streaming and how streaming is quote unquote kind of disrupting TV, but also helping it. And there's just two different types of um, platforms and places in order for you to tell stories um, with theaters done for right now. It's like, everything is going to be, everything's being watched on a smart TV and it's on a phone or a tablet. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I would love to know, know from you, you know, we haven't even talked about writers 50, 50, but yeah, I now, know. now for you as an executive producer, a showrunner, a creator, how do you create these stories with so many tools in front of you? Cause you even talked about it. Like you created a comic book before you've created, um, you know, different assets, digital assets, physical assets, like as a creator, how do you come up with the story and then come up with different ways to tell that story on different platforms. And especially these days when you, when you have so many tools in front of you. Thank you. Thank you for that question. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's really a, a, you know, a great one. I mean, what I, what I always say and what I live by is that it's, you know, story first, um, medium and platform second. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, just, just letting the, the that story and the characters and that and that journey um you know especially you know with 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 cinematic storytelling um and just all stories but but certainly in cinematic storytelling it's 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 really about seeing a character character go through an experience and change right they begin they begin one way and then you know they they, they go through trials and tribulations um and it's really, and it really usually, it, it all comes back to themselves, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the, great, the greatest trials and tribulations that they're actually experiencing are the ones with themselves. It's like, you know, that, that, that battle between the inner, you know, the inner and the outer. Um, right. if it, hold on one second. There's like an alarm going off right now and I'm gonna okay, see sure. what this is. Hold on one second. You got it, you got it.
yeah, that was going to get picked up in the mic, but it's okay. Please go on about um, the character and, and how uh, storytelling, like it really is just about the story, the character and building from there. Yeah, you know, always and, and just, you know, what is what is that journey of change that the character is going to go on, right? Because, you know, um, the, you know, stories about transformation, a character begins one way and they end up somewhere else uh, emotionally and sometimes, you know, physically. But um, so, you know, so once once I really lock in on the story that I want to tell, and this transformation, um, then I then I just really decide what is the best medium and platform to tell you know to tell that narrative, um, and uh, and 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 something else another another part of the thinking process is really to decide you know what is the best medium to introduce this intellectual property to the world. Wow, that's so true. Like it, it's mind blowing that you that you're saying that because before it was just film and TV, or comic books or a novel, but now there's just so many different platforms and distribution, like uh, you know, uh, areas that you can actually tell the story. Exactly, exactly, and and it may not always begin, you know, in, in, to be premiered um, on a platform, you know, that the that initial. The initial premiering platform and distribution delivery system may not be the the first one may not be the one that you actually were always thinking about right it, it, it mm -hmm. could be a podcast it could be it could be a comic book it could be a blog right it could be it could be a series of articles it could be it could be short stories I mean you know fill, fill in the blank in terms of mediums and mediums and and, and platforms right it, look it could, it could be a snapchat show yeah um, so, so it's, it's really about taking a look at this, uh, you know, this living, breathing, I always say it's a living, breathing narrative, you know, this, this, this story um, that, uh, that, that you are giving life to. Um, and, you know, what, what is the best way to initially present it to the world, establish that IP, that intellectual property and something that you can build on, you know, another mediums and platforms, or you know, just even, or just even that in that one medium platform, continue to grow it, um, and then you know, and then and then expand it, um, because I, you know, as as a creator, as an artist, as a storyteller, that's really where we're at right now. You know, it's really where we're at in terms of the business, and and quite, you know, quite frankly, you know, Mitchell, I don't really see that changing. Mm -hmm anytime soon, um, you know, it's, it's all about the I, you know, IP, you know, it really is all about IP, whether, whether it was existing IP or your original IP, it's, it's, you know, really understand and uh, just really understand the value of your intellectual property. You know, I mean, and, and I say this to writers all the time. I mean, I say this to storytellers, never underestimate the value of your IP and mm -hmm. what you bring. You know, we're, we're, we, we, we are creating, we're creating something that's so valuable. Um, and when I say valuable, I mean, I mean that on a variety of different levels. It's like, yes, of course, valuable from a business perspective, but also valuable in terms of the people's lives that you can change. That's right. You know, with your stories. So just never underestimate the power of what you have and what you've created and, and, you know, take heed, but, you know, um, step into that, own that, be confident, uh, you know, about, about that. And it's, and what we create is revered. So, mm -hmm. um, and also that it can grow and be, and can become many different things. Um, and, uh, and, but, you know, at, at, at the core, you know, it, at, at the core, it's still about, it's all, it's always, it's always a story of transformation, right? That's right. And what's interesting now, just, you saying that about the power of story, the power of your IP and your ideas, the interesting turn to all of this is how YouTube creators and Instagram influencers and TikTokers, they are their own IP. It's strange to think about it, right? Yeah, because absolutely. as they grow their channels and they grow their profiles, they themselves become the storyteller and the story and the character and you have this mix of reality TV 
and also a creator. So it's people want to watch this creator create, but also want to see their creations and then see if they can also do it themselves and how can they support. So it's this strange world now that I'm seeing where it's a lot of the creators, even for myself and, and yourself, like you're a brand, you're a creator, but you're also your own IP as you start yes. growing. So you're, true. and you're my podcast, my, me as Mitchell Dumas, uh, like, uh, or you as Yvette Vargas, as you know, you, as you create all of this IP you put out in the world, people start saying, well, what's Yvette's story? Yvette, you, tell your story. And also what's your channel? What's your podcast? Yes. <laughs> and so it's, it's interesting now how the the switch around has turned the the camera has turned onto the creator, and so the Absolutely. creator creates the creations that we watch. But now we want to see past the lens, and we want to know who the creator is. And Absolutely. how do you feel now? You know, with, with writers fifty fifty, you could talk about it a little bit too. Yes, yes, when you yes. Are, when you are telling people about getting into the quote unquote industry, do you find that people are Still wanting, of course, to get into TV, but people are also thinking about, okay, can I get into Netflix? Maybe I can do something else. Because like, writers now, they have so many different types of avenues, like you just said, blogs, podcasts. Like, what do you find now as kind of like this new um, writing medium that this new class of writers are gravitating towards? And also, you know, what's, what has been your advice to, to new creators as they come into your program? Yeah. Yeah, no. Um, you know, again, thank you. Thank you, Mitchell, so much for, you know, for, for, for asking these questions. And <laughs> I am constantly, I'm constantly advising uh, writers um, on all, on all of these, you know, all, all of these fronts. Um, I want to give you a little bit of backstory in terms of how the writers in 5050 came about, uh, you know, so as, as a Latina uh, in, 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 in this business, um, and, uh, and just, I, I mean, I've, I've, I've been an activist my entire life as well. Um, you know, just when I really started to understand that the entertainment business, what, you know, was basically, it was built, right. It, it was, it was built for a certain kind of person, you know, it was built for a certain kind of person. Uh, and I, and definitely at the top, at the top, at the top of that list was, you know, white, white men, you know, white men. It was built by it was built by well actually originally you know there were some women that were that were part of the initiation but then unfortunately they got kicked out <laughs> they were outnumbered outpowered um, but uh, but you know in, in terms of the way the business still works today um, it's mostly an industry that that you know was 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 built by white men for white men um, and uh, and the gatekeeping um you know up and i mean it's been changing but still you know historically has really been about letting you know keeping others out and 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 uh and just continuing to provide opportunities for white men um you know so that's historically the way that the industry has been uh you know was built and and, and that's the way that that it has worked you know historically and when i really started to understand that um yeah I mean it was disheartening uh, you know uh, uh, obviously um and at the same time although that reality which you know I mean you know we, we all have realities uh in in all businesses right uh that we have to face so that then we can work with that with, with that system and or disrupt that system um you know and, and make it anew and I'm very much that person going back to being a creator. It's like, okay, how can we address and, and, and just even, and, and that's also going back to being a storyteller. Storyteller is a, is a problem solver, right? You're a story mm -hmm. problem solver. Um, and then, and then, and then also really understanding the power of media, right? It's, it's, it's how we speak to the world, right? For, I mean, the, the, the most powerful the most powerful messaging is that image in a narrative construct, right? That informs the world in so many different ways, not, 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 not only to entertain, but actually educates and informs while it's entertaining. 
That's right. Um, you know, it ha- it ha- it has that power. So, so when I really, you know, was able to wrap my brain around all of that, and then um, I realized that the business worked a certain way, and that because of that, that things could actually be harder for me as a woman, and as a you know a Latina, and and as a person of color. Um, I I just really set out to take action any way that I could to change that. Um, and, you know, and, and, and to come up with solutions, you know, just really, really to come up with solutions. So, um, you know, I've been a member of the, uh, of the WGA since 2008, since 2008. And, um, you know, and, and, you know, the, the, the WGA, you know, they, they, they have their inclusion and equity, committees. Um, you know, so I started to become involved in those committees and I've been in a leadership role actually, um, uh, at the WGA for, I don't know, maybe seven or eight years. Um, and I'm currently the co-chair of the, uh, uh you know, Latino writers committee at nice. the WGA. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I'm also a member of the inclusion and equity group, which is a, uh, like high level think tank group at the, at the Writers Guild um, to address, you know, specifically inclusion and equity issues, uh, both at the Guild and also of how we can inform the industry at large. And we're really up to some great, some great uh, things there um, that I can't disclose yet, but, uh, you know, but you will, you will know about it when, when we are. Um, And, uh, you know, and, and, and really, you know, especially in my Latino Writers Committee, you know, my intent was Putting, putting a Latino writer, a Latinx writer, in front of a buyer, a hirer, and a creator, uh, because that would, you know, those three check boxes, right? Whether you know a development executive, a uh, you know a current executive, or or you know or a, a producer with a pod deal. Mm-hmm. Um, and then of course you know creator, you know being a showrunner, all of those. At, you know, all those avenues is what would create access for those writers. So, uh, yeah, you know, it's like I, I, I've created a series, um, you know, and of course, you know, with every with everyone else's, you know, support. But I but I definitely, um, you know, created a number of new events, um, you know, in in my committee, uh, you know, one of which. Again, literally, it was like this a, a meet and greet, a meet and greet structure, uh, which was like four back to back general meetings with either a development executive uh, or a current executive or a showrunner throughout the entire year. And uh, and those events, um, I mean, the, the, the results were out, you know, astounding. Who got who got staffed on the show? Who ended up um, then selling a show? Who partnered with a showrunner? Uh, and and just as you know, it's a relationship business, you know. And and so who fostered really long lasting relationships that have served their careers? So the the, the results were incredible, Mitchell. And uh, and anyway, so that event, as well as you know some others, some others that I had conceived, um, they've become staples. They've become mandates now at at, at the Writers Guild. Well done, Yvette. That's so yeah. cool. I mean, just from someone who is also a, a POC creator and that has seen how there's such a barrier of entry. Um, and that's the reason why I really got into digital well, digital and YouTube and really video because I didn't see that in YouTube. I didn't see right. that in YouTube and social media and branded content. And for you to have that power, WGA is a huge organization. And not yeah. only that, it's you have access to development executives and, and showrunners and, and studios and production companies. And you're doing such a great service for the creator community because especially in the Latinx community, especially in the, the just in creators in general, because there is such a hard road ahead for a new writer where I, I'm, I used to manage writers. So I know the idea of trying to find a writer in a, in a competition or a short film or uh, or referral, you know, I would, I would, I wouldn't take unsolicited um, scripts. So yeah. just to imagine how a young writer would have to get their script into someone's hand in order to get into a room and like just get staffed, if anything, get their show created. It's, 
it's such a arduous journey without someone helping them and give, opening up that door. And that's what you're doing. So I uh, commend absolutely. you for that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so, so much for that. Um, that, that means a lot to me. Um, you know, so that all became a movement, right? Like, you know, different now, now, there, now we, now we had a, a couple of more tools in our toolkit uh, of, of how to open up access. And, uh, and that was really, you know, for myself, I learned so much from, you know, from that ex experience of, you know, again, like taking an idea and really be, being able to craft events that created opportunities, uh, you know, and, and, and access and then to see the fruit, the fruits of that. So, yeah, you know, so that, that really, that really inspired me in so many different ways. And, and again, I, I learned, I learned a lot, you know, from that. And then I started to implement some of those methods in my life and with other, you know, and, and with other organizations. And then also just, um, you know, in terms of mentorship, I mean, I am a firm believer in, in mentorship um, and, you know, and, but, but it's, but it's a real commitment to, uh, you know, a storyteller, to, to a human being um, for some time, you know, th th throughout their career, you know, it's about mentorship to success, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, 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 you know, of course we can't do it for, for all, but for those that we can, uh, you know, really mentor them to success because, because, you know, it isn't about giving advice here and there. It's, it's being there for when they really have the questions or, or when they're facing, they may be facing some tough situations so that they can really get through that and, and, and thrive and, and, um, you know, and then they can be in a position to uh, be bumped up um, and then ultimately hire, right? And, and then they can mentor to success and everything else because I really think that that's, that's part of the fix, you know, for, you know, for the problem. So, you know, I've just always been, uh, you know, a firm believer in that. So the Writers Room 5050 completely grew out of my, uh, you know, activism between mentorship for storytellers, between my work, um, you know, at the Writers Guild, really being able to see that I could make, you know, I, I could be an instrument of change. Um, and uh, and I, I always I always tell people it's, you know, I started the Writers Room 5050 yeah, like by accident. You know, it's, it's a company. It's a company that I started by accident. Because it just grew out of my, you know, just out of my activism work and men and mentorship, you know, with with writers where, you know, there, there, there were there were just some some writers that basically said to me, you know, who I was mentoring who said, Yvette, you like literally need to do this <laughs> <laughs> uh, in a structured, you know, in a structured format for, you know, for for others. And, you know, and what the whole you need to do this, what 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 they meant was like, you know, literally. Um, mentoring, teaching, and training in a writer's room setting, right? In a writer's room environment uh, so that now the teaching, the training, the mentorship is addressing a variety of different skill sets, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, of course, you know, of course, writing and, uh, you know, long story, long form storytelling um, in terms of series, uh, skills, skills, um, tips, tricks, techniques of how you can really survive and thrive in that writer's room, what is expected of you, how to pitch, all of these, these different skill sets that are absolutely necessary uh, for, you know, any, 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 any storyteller, any storyteller, but specifically for, uh, you know, writers, you know, writers in television. So, that's literally how the writers in 5050 was born you know i i um and it was the it was the summer of i think it was the summer of 20 yeah the summer of 2019 mm, okay. is uh when i originally um had uh you know so i like I, I created two labs one was pitching the television series and the you know the, the second one was writing the television pilot and uh, I was running these, you know, um, they, they, they like literally filled, they filled immediately. They were, they, and they, they were you know, just closed. I had to close them. And they were full. Um, and, uh, and so, uh, yeah, so I, and, and, and I just, um, everything's presented in a writer's room setting where it is collaborative. Um, you know, I, I teach people how to properly communicate and, and um, you know, pro pro properly articulate their pitches and just, just everything, everything that occurs in that type of setting. 
And this is what happened. And by the way, I, I had committed to teaching those two labs just over the course of that summer, you know, so that there was two nights a week that, that for myself, you know, I committed to doing that for two nights a week, the, the, the pitching lab on one night and obviously the writing lab on another. And that was going to be it. I mean, that's what I, that's what I saw happening, <laughs> Mitchell. But three weeks into those labs, I started hearing from the business. I started hearing from, from development executives and producers uh, and showrunners wanting me to refer my alumni. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the greatest way to take your students, teach them, train them, mentor them, and then give them a opportunity at the very end. That's just a, such a great program. I mean, I, I, I tell everyone, I'm going to tell everyone on this podcast right now who's listening, who is a writer, you need to check out Writer's Room 5050 because this is, I haven't heard about this with anyone outside of the studio system. I remember for me having, you, the only programs you can see that are like this were maybe the Disney, you know, writers programs or the, you know, the Sony ones, the NBC ones, and those have so many people applying to them. And then sometimes it's hard to be, uh, to even know about them. But this right here, what you're providing is such a great resource and also just a great way to, you know, mentor a new generation of storytellers. And exactly. And now I'm wondering from you, like you've seen the evolution of storytelling and what are your thoughts on what's, what's going to come out now, like in, in the future? I mean, you're a, you're a tech geek. You yeah. see the, <laughs> everything from shooting on PD one fifties and DV cameras and DV tapes to now recording on your phone. Now we're using zoom. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> it's what, what have you seen now as kind of like uh, the, the future of storytelling and what do you, what are you, what are you hoping for? Oh, I, I love that you're asking, I love that you're asking this question. Um, you know, I always, I always go to my foundation, my, my, my base first, right. Mm -hmm. Storytelling and the character and the transformation. Story. It, it, exactly. And all and, and story first medium and platform second, right? What is the story that you are compelled to tell? Um, and what is the best way to deliver it? And, 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 you know, so, I mean, I, I always begin there. Um, but what, but what, but really the greatest thing, you know, at this particular moment that regardless of who you're, who you are, where you are at, um, you know, certainly in, in, in you know, in, in, in this country, for the most, you know, for, for, for the most part, uh, everyone has the ability to make content. Mm -hmm. Everyone has the tool in their pockets, as well as other tools, right? Um, you know, you know, if, if it's if it's social media, you know, etc. But we all have the ability to make content. So make stuff, you know, make stuff. And on, on, you know, an experiment on different mediums, they, they, they were available to you. I mean, one, one, of, one of the greatest things, you know, for myself um, in terms of, you know, social media, I have always seen social media as a distribution platform, Yeah. you know, and it's like, it's like, yes, of course, it's great. You know, it's great to be in touch with your friends and, 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 and also see what's happening in their worlds. But for me, and, and, and I just always saw it this way was the greatest strength, like the greatest thing for me as a storyteller with social media is that at any moment I can distribute content. Mm -hmm. I can distribute content. I can test that content. Uh, I, you know, I can expand on that content just by literally hitting, you know, send. And, um, you know, and, and, and uh, so the great thing is what is the story that you want to tell? And, and then how are you going to make it? Right? How are you going to make it with the tool? The tools that are readily available to you right now at this moment. How are you going to make it so that it's the best piece of content that it can be? And then how are you going to distribute it? And that's right. what I tell all storytellers because you know the, the the tenets of storytelling are pretty much the same, right? You have a beginning, you have a middle, and you have an end. <laughs> um, and 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 how the character navigates all of that. And, you know, and the journey and the world and the theme. And, and again, that transformation that the character is going to go through, given, you know, given, given the, the, the challenges that they're facing and what's at stake for them and all of those different beautiful 
rich elements of story, you, you pretty much you can deliver just about any narrative, uh, you know, on on these platforms that we have in front of us. If 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 uh, and and I mean, and some of that can just be a proof of concept, right? You can literally utilize these different mediums and platforms. Um, of course, you know, you, you, YouTube being in, in, in that mix to, uh, to experiment with, you know, just right. to experiment with and, and, and see and see what's working, see what's not working. And, and, but, but dissect it, if, you know, if it's not necessarily working, if you didn't achieve what you had in your, in, in your mind, really dissect that, you know, what about it didn't work so that you, you know, so that you learn and, and, you know, and you can improve upon that next time. So, you know, so what I, what I tell Mitchell, everyone is what is the story, right. And, and, and make that great. Right. I mean, just make that excellent, make that excellent. Um, and, and also, uh, you know, while you're creating that decide how you're going to distribute it. Um, because of course, every medium and platform has its own set of rules and that's going to inform some of some of some of the story and certainly some of the production of how you're you're eventually going to deliver it. So you have to understand those rules as well of the medium, um, and then put it out there, right? Put it out there and and see what happens. And 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 you know what? Magic can happen. You know, really magic can happen. And you're just gonna you're just going to become a better storyteller in you know in in the process. So it's I mean it's an incredible time to be a storyteller. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, you're so many ideas like popping into my mind because I remember two years ago I was working with a writer, a friend of mine who had a comic book idea. We decided to shoot a proof of concept. We turned it into an Instagram account, so each day was a portion of the story. And so we shot a short. We shot three shorts, and then we posted it on Instagram. And we had a comic book, and it was a little over ambitious. I'm still proud of the work. And what we learned from it was that it didn't work on Instagram, but it was working as a comic book. It was a great little, you know, shorts. And what I, what I learned from it, and what I've learned from being a YouTube creator is like, like what you said before, like social media is a testing ground. Yep. You know, it's almost like I, I was writing something on my landing page today for my, my funnel. And I was telling, I was just saying that, you know, I learned from YouTube how to test the market in real time. Because I will be told straight away when something is bad and is not what the market wants. And it's you have to be okay with rejection and you have to be okay with um, failure, but also take it as a learning lesson to take your story to another medium or switch it or do something so that your character and it's in their transformation is told in the best way possible. And for you, Yvette, I know you got so many, you know, different things to handle every single day and you're a creative how do you get into your creative flow how do you put aside one project over here and writer's room 50 50 here and then your company over here and then your family over here and then someone says we want to pitch from you how do you zone in and then come up with an idea and just start writing it's tough i mean it's 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 definitely tough but but uh first of all dead, deadlines are incredibly helpful mm -hmm. there you go <laughs> deadlines right the deadlines will always go to the top of the list and, and then and then i will uh you know schedule my time accordingly uh and then um and then you know in addition to that it's just it's just really scheduling time for everything you know that's and I'm not, oh, and I'm not always, uh, not, not always on the schedule, but, uh, you know, but certainly when, when I'm on the schedule, that that's really when I can make mm -hmm. everything work. Um, because it's hard, you know, it's, it's tough. You can't do everything at once. Uh, you know, although, although you certainly want to, you just can't do everything well, you know, at the, at, at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, Mitchell, that's, that's, that's really what I have found that works is, is scheduling my writing time, you know, sch Love scheduling. It. The reading time, scheduling, the meeting time, right? Uh, you know, there there are just days in my schedule where it's like, okay, this is you know this this is the day for the you know the the generals, or you know this is the day for follow up. This is you know this this is the day for calls. Um, otherwise, otherwise it's you know it's it's just a mess. It's just really difficult to get anything done. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I think that's what I've heard from a lot of prof creative professionals. Honestly, it's just you got to schedule the 
the recreating the creation time and and developing your ideas and if you can't if you get that writer's brock you just power through it you know and it's 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 tough these days because we're surrounded by a lot of distractions and yeah. it's really all about focusing on that one thing and scheduling that time and that block so that you have complete focus on that and deadlines definitely help i definitely know what how that feels um, deadlines help tremendously <laughs> yeah with well, that i know like we're over an hour now and i know you're a busy person that has so many things going on in your life so i don't want to take up too much of your time so you know before we go and i'd love for you to just tell people out there who are writers i know you kind of just gave some great tips and, and advice like what what is kind of like their first step you know what is like a writer or a creator's first step into tv or into the professional world is it uh you know create something put it online and hope somebody um gets a uh you know sees it and picks it up is it of course apply for a writer's room 50 50 or yeah. is it you know go into um you know writers uh, you know, writing competitions. Cause I do have writers who still ask me like Mitchell, how do I get my hand, my, my, my script into a manager's hand? Like our managers even important these days. Right. So I would love to hear your thoughts and your advice to young writers out there. Sure. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, yeah. I mean, and, and honestly, you know, Mitchell, it's, it's all of those things. Um, you know, so, so basically practice your craft, right. Mm -hmm. Really become a master of your craft and that takes a lot of work right to be so study study re read a lot of scripts write a lot of scripts um and 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 also be really rigorous and honest with yourself in terms of what's working what's not working and why right because that because that's really how this is really how you grow um so that's number one you know pra constantly practice your craft get into a writer's group. If you're not in a writer's group, absolutely, uh, you know, even if you have to create it, right? Even, even if you have to create your own writer's group, it's, it is just critical to be reading other people's material, giving notes mm -hmm. and having other people read your material and provide notes. And ideally, ideally, you want to, you want to get into a uh, writer's group with writers that are further along in their craft than you are so that you can learn right you, you 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 know you you can you can learn from you know from from them so that i i think that is uh just a critical a critical step um and then when that script is ready and and you're going and you're going to know that between feedback from the writers in your group if you have any professional relationships with anyone um you know to the point where they may read your script um, uh, and, and they themselves may tell you, uh, you know, how, how close, how ready, right? How ready that script is or not. Uh, you also can, um, you know, there, there are coverage, there are coverage, um, co you know, companies that, 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 that provide coverage on your scripts, yeah. you know, that, that can be helpful. Um, you know, that certainly can be helpful. And, and, and there, you know, there are, yeah, I mean, I, all, all, all of those things, um, you know, of course, go through, go through some educational process. That's really necessary. The writers are in 50, 50. <laughs> I, I, I do have to say that, you know, it, 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 you know, we, we absolutely provide an incredibly valuable, so, so many valuable resources, um, which I'm very, very proud of, uh, you know, so, so go through all of those steps, do all of that work. And then when that script is ready, you know, when you believe that it's actually ready to you know, to, to take to the, you know, to the marketplace at that point, enter it in contests. There you go. That's and, right. Yeah. Enter it in contests and, 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 and different festivals, but you really want to focus on the contest and the festivals that have a, that, that have uh, an excellent, excellent reputation, you know, so the, you know, the, the ones, the ones that the industry respects and looks at, mm -hmm. you know, and, that, and that's like South by Southwest, uh, you know, Sundance for screenplays, you know, the, the, the Nichols Fellowship, um, you know, there, there absolutely are competitions that the industry looks at as a vetting, you know, a, a vetting process. Um, and, uh, you know, in terms of the writers, the, the, those scripts that, that rise, 
um, you know, they, they get attention, right? They're, they, they get attention. And this is like, you know, uh, and this, and that can be a doorway to getting representation that can be, uh, you know, definitely uh, an, an avenue to getting professionals in the, in the industry to, you know, take, take note of that particular script. So anyway, submit it to the contest, see what kind of feedback, uh, you know, you, you receive. And, and, and if you, and if you do start placing and, and, you know, and even look, even winning, then chances are that that script is actually now ready to present to the industry. Yeah. Uh, and this is where you can mine your relationships, right? You can mine your relationships for that referral, that coveted referral, because whoever recommends you, uh, they're basically putting their reputation on the line saying that I have vetted mm -hmm. this writer and, uh, and this is a script that you absolutely need to read. And this is a writer that you need to meet. They have, uh, you know, they have a fresh and unique voice and they're ready, you know, they're ready for this next, for this next step. So all of that, right. I mean, that's, that's all work, um, that, you know, that, that, that we need to do. Um, and, uh, and, and many doors, you know, when, when you have a screen, when there's a piece of material that is ready and it hits the and it hits the marketplace people find that script yeah, you know that that yeah yeah that that script will end up in the right hands so uh you know so that's everything that 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 writers you know need need to do because you know especially when you when you're an emerging writer really what truly happens is that the industry finds you yep. when you're writing at a level and you and you have those scripts the industry finds you and uh, yeah, you know, so, so it's, so it's up, it's up to you to do all, you know, just all that work, all that work and it will, and it will pay off. That's right. Or you just join writers room 50, 50, and they'll just help you with everything because I think that you uh, have created something that a lot of writers need because that right there is such great advice. Put me back in the days when I used to write coverage and I used to have to read two scripts a night and then four scripts a weekend and write coverage and give it. Uh, I'm getting like, uh, what is it called? Uh, PTSD from that. But it's um, <laughs> such a great advice for you to tell people to always go back to the craft, focus on the character, the transformation and the story. Of course, the whole idea of networking. But again, if you're that good and your craft is that tight, people will find it. So Yvette, thank you so much. Really enjoyed this um, conversation. And I think a lot of writers and creators and storytellers will really find this useful. And so before we go, I'd love for you to tell people where to find you online and Writers Room 5050 online and how can we support? Excellent. Uh, again, thank you, Mitchell, so much. Um, yeah, so the Writers Room 5050, you can find us uh, at our website, which is writersroom5050.com. Um, and, uh, and if you want to, you know, also just drop us a line, the, uh, email is info at writersroom5050.com if you have any questions. Um, and then in terms of social media, uh, you can always find me on Instagram at, uh, Vargas girl 23, uh, and, uh, on, on Twitter at, which is just, you know, at Vargas girl. Um, and, uh, yeah, but for writers, you can see the best place is to go to our website and you will get all of the information Beautiful. That, that you need. Well, I'm going to tell all of my writers, friends, actually, I'm going to send this link to about three people. I already have it in my mind, uh, who are young writers who have been asking me for the past year what to do. And so thank you so much, Yvette. You're doing such great work out there. I just really want to honor you and like acknowledge you for the work you're doing for writers and storytellers, especially in the know latinx and the poc community who need this support need this mentorship and just your accomplishments it's it's great to have you on here and i cannot wait for all your awesome shows to come out and good luck with all your pitches thank you thank you so much mitchell it's been uh, just a, a great uh this has been a great experience you're a phenomenal host and uh i'm thank you sure. know I'm, I'm humbled i'm just humbled and honored thank you so much for having me Awesome. Thanks, Yvette. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Bye. 
Thank you for listening to the Creative Haven podcast. And if you dig it and like what you heard today, please give us a nice review and rating and share it with one of your friends that you think needs some creative inspiration. You can always find more content and resources at thecreativehaven.com and hit me up on Instagram at Mitchell Doomlau. And if you want to reach out, collab, or ask any questions, you have my permission to slide into my DMs. So keep positive, continue to learn and hone your craft, and create all day. Salamat.